greatest trick the devil ever played in the 20th century was convincing everybody he didn't exist. What happened to you afterwards is, is always indicative to me that something's real. Come in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Fight this thing! dark, evil, or wicked spirits inside this house. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We need to fight this thing. That's weird. We command that you leave. I'm mostly concerned with about Ethan. It's attacking him, what it's going to do. And then he's talking and it's putting things in his head. That's what concerns me. No, Ethan's been destroyed with this thing in his life. Every night, every day, no matter where we go. Okay, so we just got here to New Waterford, Ohio. We're doing a family haunting tonight. This case was actually referred to us from another paranormal group. There is supposedly multiple people possessed inside this residence. So Sean and I are getting ready to head inside right now. Rocky's on his way and we'll see what is going on here. Unexpected. Hey, I'm glad you're here. Did somebody else call you here? Yeah. I knew it was you guys the minute I saw you. I watch you all the time. Like, I need your autograph before you leave. We'll come up, give us a second, we'll come up. I can't even believe you guys just got out of that van. Like you, I'm like starstruck right now. I knew who you were the minute you opened your mouth. All right, thank you. Thank you. Star in the middle of the circle. This is a video. His legs all busted up because it bites him. It moved my stand one night. So that was all one night. It just and then the next morning it started again. It bit him. See up in the arm up here, mm -hmm. the hand. It bit him. Also, this was it. See the table moving? Mm -hmm. It gets worse than that. It flips it sometimes. When you try to push it down, it's so much strength, you can't push it down. It started back in October when my grandson went trick or treat. And, and ever since this thing that they call it came into our life and never left. And ever since December, we've had this thing supernatural in our house, hurting my grandson, doing things, throwing stuff. Things I never believed that you ever have in your life, something like this. It's crazy. It throws cups out at him, and dishes. And when he comes and sits in the dining room at this table, it picks the table up and throws the chairs. He cannot sit in here either. It torments him, it writes on him, it bites him. This has been going on up till from December up to now, it got worse. He went to school with scratches over him. They thought my daughter was hurting him, but she wasn't. It was this thing that came in their home. Take him to school, we take pictures of him last time we went to school to make sure, you know, it happens in school after him too. He's been bitten on the bus also. When he's getting the bus in the morning, got to the school, they seen scratches over his face. And that happened, he told us on the bus, and they seen it in school. What do you think's going on here? some kind of supernatural devil. Places we go in the vehicles and that, it picks up things and throws it. Some friends of mine even seen all this, it's true. People don't believe us even in the family, so we really don't talk about it and they laugh about it. It's been happening in the vehicles, every vehicle he's in with whoever, it, 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 it throws things. About a week ago, to try to pull him out of the car, I opened my, my door on my car, this thing opened the door and tried to pull him out, I put him in the front then. It's opened the doors in the vehicles too. I mean, I got that on video. What's that? Watch! Oh my God, get the door. The scratches, everything. He's being tormented last night. He has a cross on last night. It, it ripped it off of him. And the necklace, the necklace of itself, it's holding the cross on, it's all tangled pieces. Everything in my house has been destructed by this thing. It beats on the wall in the bathroom also. So I had the church to come in and talk to Ethan 
And she believes it's here and she can feel it because she had problems, something like that in her life one time. And she does believe Ethan. But she, how I got here, she wondered if he messed with something to bring it here. I feel it came from when Halloween started. And to get everybody to believe it, it's impossible. The church, a couple of churches we brought in, they do believe in it. But not everybody, like we do. Was the church able to help you? They came down, blessed the house and everything. It started doing things and he's seen it in his own vision. Ethan's seen this thing of his own eyes. We can't see it, but he'd seen it. It would be in the hallway or he would tell me where it was setting. Ethan would pick things up by his hand and move them and try to fight the thing. But the priest told him not to do that because it's playing into it and making it stronger. But they say he was gifted with these powers. I don't know. The priest told us to ignore this thing, to, to believe in God and everything else, and it'll go away and believe what you want to believe in. But it's not real. It's Satan and all this, and told us to believe in God, it's his self. And he really just didn't really give us too many answers, but he did look at no pictures of what had been happening in our life. It moves the bed. It flips him up and down on the bed where he came to sleep at night down there. We have used the religious prayer in this house when he's here, it goes nuts. It starts throwing things they want you to stop, playing religious music also. It just goes a crazy the thing does. It starts throwing stuff in and it starts writing on him. And have you guys witnessed any of these marks appearing on him? I mean, we don't see it sitting there writing on him. It's just when he gets up, he don't know it until he can feel it. You know, when he gets up from under the covers, it's all on him. The pictures I've showed you, that was all of him one morning to the next day. It was writing from that night on to the next morning. This thing writes on him, it bites him. It moves things. My grandson would be sitting on the recliner with me. It moves the recliner back and forth real fast. The last time it flipped me out of the recliner. So this is, this is real what we go through. Or I guess some evil thing. What it is, I don't know, entity. As long as he's with us, it's with us. He went to the hospital, we didn't do nothing at the hospital. He was there from a Monday till Friday. As soon as he left that day and got in the car and started throwing stuff. They said these things can hide too, which I believe that too. I've seen it for myself. Sometimes Ethan played into some of this and act with it all, but some people thought it was Ethan doing all this, but it wasn't all Ethan. Ethan might have done some things, but not all that this thing's doing to us. And it's really destroyed Ethan bad because it gets to the point where he don't want to be here because he's afraid to go to sleep at night. It whispered to him to kill himself. One night I couldn't get him up. It was like he was in a trance. Like I was trying to wake him up and he jumped up. It was like he was in some kind of trance. There's going to be people that look at the evidence, at the pictures, and they're going to think, you know, this could be a hoax. I wish it was. Believe me. What do you say to those people? I see it from my own eyes. No, it's no hoax. No, he didn't do it to himself. I do believe that. When the first pentagram came on, it was on his back at first, and that's when I got all the other pictures. You can't make that on your back when you're laying down. There ain't no possible way. And on his legs and everything when he did, no, that wasn't him. I sat here when that happened, when he woke up and had him on him. There was no hoax. I would never lie to something, thing like this. This thing's dangerous that's in our life, especially him. It's like when he's more by himself through the night, it, it attacks him. When nobody's around, nobody knows it can. Really, it can't stand the religion. That's the thing we know about this thing. And the priest said that's the only way we destroy it, but doing these prayers and everything we did, it's still, it's with us. And I wish to God it would be gone, but it's not, and nobody believes us. I have friends here, they encountered it, they've seen it all. I got people that seen it for themselves but they believe it. So it ain't something I'm gonna sit here and make a lie up to something like this, never. And I would never put my grandson to jeopardize him in this kind of situation, which is real, not fake. It really upsets me because I'm worried about him. I'm really worried where this can go to because, see, four years ago, he lost my mother and it was a bad tragedy. It was hard for him to get over, which he never did. And then he lost his father a year after that. So it's been a bad, rough life for Ethan. Ethan's had a rough life. And this now, it being makes it tougher. His hair ended up falling out three weeks ago. They took him to the doctor, Megan did, to have blood work done to see if he had something, why, you know, his hair was falling out. It was coming out in clumps. So we don't know what happened from that time on, but 
You think I would believe this? No. You think I want to believe it? No. But it's here. You know, what's important for us is, you know, to document your story, your evidence, come in, see what paranormal activity we can document with okay. our equipment and our cameras and our audio. Yeah, we've only had one family that we caught faking stuff. And that is was that our right? very, one of our very first family cases. No, this ain't no fake. Trust me. If this was a fake, I wouldn't even do this even for a fake. Well, what we've been experiencing since October, it has scratch marks on them. You know, it'll bite them. It'll pick up furniture and throw it. It's it's very scary. It really is. It threw a plate at him and hit him in the eye. It made his eye black and blue. I had to take him to school like that. But when I took him to the hospital, that's when they called Children's Services in to find out what was going on. And we went to the priest, but he did he couldn't help us. Why couldn't the priest help you? He said just to believe in God and have faith. Is what he said. That's basically what he said. But it really is. It's really happening. There's something here. There's something here with us that we can't get rid of. It's a demon or something. That's what we think. And it's attached to him because it follows him everywhere. And when the marks show up on Ethan, have you guys witnessed those firsthand or? Oh yeah, there's pentagrams that was written on them. And after a while it would disappear. Then how I know it's there, it like starts to burn, like where the area where it scratched and then I'll notice it. I think it's after me. It's been biting, hitting me. It's everything. hit him in the back, just it recently. It scratches. It threw a chair on my foot and I uh -huh. had a big bruise on my foot. When it's around, can you tell? No. Like, the reason, like, the family can tell is because stuff will, like, move back and forth and stuff like that. And nobody's even near it when it does it. And do you hear voices or anything? Yeah. It has whispered. It says, like, yourself and stuff. It's freaky. It says God's the higher power. and Regardless of how your life may be, how your life's been up to this point, you know, my brothers and I, we dealt with a lot of crazy stuff in our life as children about your age. We went through a haunting. We had a very dysfunctional, abusive family. And I know what it's like to be scared and, you know, see that there's no light at the end of the tunnel. But I can promise you, life gets a whole lot easier. Do you know why this is happening to us? I don't know, but I'm going to try to find out. The most important thing is, you know, we can come in, document the evidence, do the cleansing, get this negative energy out of here, but it's going to be up to you guys to continue the battle after we leave. It's you can't feed into it. You have to stop acknowledging it. I tell him that. It's just so hard to, though, because it's hard not to pay attention to it. Like, it bugs me so bad because I was sleeping on the futon and the chairs were moving back and forth. So what do you think's going on? Something paranormal. I don't really know about this stuff. What are you thinking right now? Just worried. I hope you guys get rid of this thing. It's really crazy. I didn't think this stuff was real. I thought it was like in movies and stuff, but then mom told me it was real. Do you feel that you feed into it more? for attention? No, it's just, it's hard to not pay attention to it because, it's with you. yeah, it's with me. Like it bugs me and it's hard not to pay attention to it because it won't stop. And what's your fear? I'm scared it's gonna hurt the family. Would you and Ethan be able to come back later? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we can do that, yeah. And then we can kind of see, because I would like to see and we won't put Ethan in any dangerous situation or anything like that. Okay. If we feel it is a bad situation to bring him back, we won't bring him back. Okay. If we think it's okay to bring him back in, it's gonna be safe for him. I would like to see if anything changes versus okay. him not in the house and then him back in the house. No, no we, we would be with you at all times. Your mom would be here too. Yeah. So they're like different forms of demons and stuff. Yeah. He's had a little bit of a rough life, you know. Went through some th stuff with me and his dad. We'll do our normal investigation so we can document. Okay. 
and then we'll get hold of you guys and okay it's just really creepy to think that this is actually real yeah. put on christian music on the tv yeah it will go nuts like it will literally trash the house you can't play christian music We're going to be in here tonight. We want you to come out and talk to us. Are you back there? We're going to help Ethan tonight. You definitely get an uneasy feeling back here in this hallway. You guys can see. It's kind of a creepy hallway. Can you show yourself with that mirror? Okay, so we got the whole house alarmed up. We got alarms back in the bedroom, here in the kitchen, on the table that moves. And we're ready to start our investigation. If there's anybody in this house, my name's Josh, this is Rocky and Sean. We are here tonight to talk to you. If you could come forward and give us a sign of your presence and let us know you're inside this house. We're on an EVP session. Tarpin. My name is Josh. Can you tell me your name? Whoever or whatever's inside this house, we want you to give us a sign and let us know that you're in here. Who are you and what do you want? We want you to give us a sign and let us know that you're in here. Who are you and what do you want? Are you back in this area? I feel like this was the one area that I felt was like heavy. And when I was back here and here by myself, I heard something knock back here. Are you bothering Ethan? If you're hurting Ethan, or if you're attached to Ethan, I command you to come forward and show yourself. Let us know that you're in here. I got an alarm in this bedroom. You can set that off. The family says that you move stuff. You bang on the walls. We want to experience that. Was that you? I was out here. If you're behind Sean, hit something hard. We're going to help Ethan tonight. We're going to drive you out of this house and drive you away from this family. Hear that? 
You will no longer be able to hurt Ethan. Why are you scratching him? You can pick on a kid. You can't pick on three grown adults. I've got a device here that can hear you. I want to know where you're at. Let's go back out there. If you're in here with us, can you lift this table up? You pick on Ethan. Are you really that strong? Don't be a coward. Set off one of these alarms. Come on, we got alarms set up everywhere. Right there. Are you beside me? Is that all you can do? If you can hurt somebody, hurt one of us. Heard you move dishes and throw all kinds of stuff. Let's sit at the table for a second and just... I've got a device here. Can you hear us? Who is in this house with us? Why don't you like Christian music? Are you human spirit? No. Where are you from? Who are you affecting inside this house? Tell me who you're trying to hurt. What are you scratching on Ethan? Tell me what you scratched on Ethan's back. Where did you come from? What did it say? I just said wood. Are you an un unholy spirit? Tell me your name. What did it say? I'm done talking to you. But I thought I had a thing. You're gonna talk to us. We don't give you choices. We're here to help Ethan, and we're here to help this family. Do you understand me? I just said tonight, bro. I said guy. You have a message. What is your message? Where did you come from? Where are you right now? Oh, you said in the kitchen. Okay, I'm going to set this alarm right here. If you're in this kitchen, set it off. I'll move it right over here to that empty seat. Nobody is sitting there. We saved that seat for you. Go have a seat. We know people from the church have been here.
and have blessed this house in the name of Jesus Christ. Does that upset you? I want to know what upsets you, what drives you crazy. So you're here at the table with us. Does that mean I'm aggravating you? Having us here upsets you? Pretty crazy it went off. Yeah. When we were to playing the music. Did that upset you? Does the Lord's Prayer upset you? If that upsets you, do something. Okay, you're sitting across from us. I want you to light that up for yes. Are you the one hurting Ethan? Are you in this house right now? Do you want Ethan back inside this house? I want to know, are you attached to Ethan? I heard that you were powerful. Where are you at right now? Are you still sitting in that chair? Do you want our help? If you're truly hurting Ethan, putting those marks on him, scaring him, hurting him, we're not going to help you. We're going to send you back to where you came from because a good spirit wouldn't do that. And you're not a good spirit, are you? Is there somebody else that's hurting Nathan? Are you trying to help Ethan? You can't be trying to help him. Well, as if this ain't the bad spirit. It has to be the bad spirit. All right, coward. Did you leave? We've seen the pictures. We've watched the videos. Can you do that stuff without Ethan being here? Do you want one of us to stay in here by herself? The back of the chair. Look like it's like a black mass. I saw it like right there. Right there. Are you back with us again? You want Josh to stand here by himself? 
Okay, let me sit in this hallway for a little bit. You want a chair back there? Yeah. Okay, I'm in here by myself. Just me and you. I got an alarm right there, and I got one on the kitchen table. Got one back in this bedroom. What was weird is once we started pl playing the Christian prayer, things started happening. The alarm at the table was going crazy. Was that you? Come on, I'm in this house by myself. Surrounded by alarms, cameras. Let's show the world how powerful you are. Are you in the kitchen? Hit something hard if you're in the kitchen. There's something walking out there. Where are you at? Move something. Okay, you're in the hallway. I keep, I feel like I got. I keep feeling like I got like a spider web feeling on the side of my face. Were you setting my alarm off? What else can you do? What's weird is this hallway doesn't feel quite as heavy as it did earlier. Earlier this just had like a real heavy, it's hard to breathe back here. Where are you at inside this house? Can you knock like this? Whoa. Did you just move this next to me? I don't know if my camera caught that. I want to know where you're at. I got the alarm right behind me. Do you like to set that off? Why does prayer upset you? We're going to use prayer in a little bit. We're going to cleanse this house. In the name of Jesus Christ. Does that upset you? Because you know that he's more powerful than you are. You may not fear us. But I know damn well you fear him. We've spent our entire lives talking to people like you. Things like you. I know you're getting upset with me. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you want. Knock all you want. This could be your last chance. Your last chance to stand up and fight. This family will have peace. Ethan will have peace. You have put fear in this family. 
Tonight that ends. I'm gonna move out here. I've definitely got a headache, but I don't wanna say it's something paranormal or something inside this house causing it. What we wanna do is see what kind of activity we get while we're doing our investigation. And then we'll bring Ethan and his mom back in here and see if things happen. Okay, I'm gonna send Sean in here. Does that mean you want Sean in here? You're pretty good at setting off equipment. Okay, I'm sending Sean in then. Yeah. Hey, you want to come in? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll be in here, man. All right, man. Set one of these alarms off. Let me know if you're in here. I got a device I can run that you can speak through. What room are you in right now? I don't see how something like you could lift up tables or throw dishes or anything. Bastard. You call me a bastard? Is that all you can do? You don't scare me. Are you human? Did somebody send you here? Who are you hurting? Are you behind Scratch. me? Scratched. Yeah, I know you like to scratch people. Can you scratch me? How do you scratch people when you're a ghost? When you have no body. Curious. What are you curious about? I don't like you. Okay, so we're going to bring Ethan and his mom back to the house and see how things change within the here. I don't want to discount anything they're going through right now. So we're going to go check with Sean, see how he's doing. How have you been feeling since? Good. Just got done eating um, Chinese food. <laughs> Did anything happen when you were gone? No. No. We were just sitting over there. Yeah, we were just waiting on you guys to figure out if you guys found anything out. Do you want to sit in there with him? Yeah, I can. Yeah. And we'll set cameras up and monitor you guys? Okay. Oh, that's creepy. Hey. Hello. Hi, Hi how are you? Alrighty. What's your name? I'm Sean. Oh, nice to meet nice you, Sean. Okay. You. You're Ethan? Yep. Nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. Hi, I'm Rocky. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet, meet you, Rocky. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's go in and we'll get the stuff set up, okay? okay? I can't see nothing and it's freaking me out. It's okay, Bubby. It's okay. Oh, something moved, something moved, something The chair something just moved. moved. The chair just moved. What do you want from us? What do you want from us? Can you oh, tell us? I don't us? like this. I don't like this. Can you tell us what you want from us? Oh, Why are you moving it. the chair? Oh, I don't Why are you oh, moving the chair? Something just scratched my arm. Something just scratched your arm? Yeah. I don't like this no more. It's okay, Bubby. It's okay. We're okay. Well, what do you want from us? Tell us. We need to know. Why are you here? What do you want? Something just touched my arm. Uh, I don't like this. It's okay, Bubby. I can't see nothing. It's freaking me out. Oh. It's okay, Bubby. It's okay. I'm not afraid of the dark. I'm just afraid of this in the dark. Okay. 
What do you want from us? Well, I'm covering up my face. Can you tell us? Can you please come speak to us? Can you please move the table if you're here? Here, get off the table. Can you stop? Can you please move the table if you're here with us? It's moving the table. Stop, I don't like this. It's okay, Bubby. We got to get through this. Well, that's creeping me out. I know, it's creeping me out too, but I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm working through it. Me on arm Something again. just touched you. Can you move the table if you're here? I'm scared, Mom. It's okay. Move the chairs if you're here, please. Oh, quit, quit, quit. Move the chair again. Yeah, Can you again. move it again? It just it just went off. It's here with us. What is? Whatever it is, it's here with How us. How do you know? Because that light just flashed on, oh, that, come on, on that thing. It's okay. It's okay. Can you tell us what you want? Hello? We're trying to talk to you. What are you? I got okay. you. Oh, thank God. I almost had a panic attack. Yeah, you did good. Oh, thank God. It's over. I don't know if you guys can see that in the dark, but it moved the chair. Whatever's here is yeah, here. Yeah, we got our cameras. Which arm did it look like a scratch going? Try to see if there's any scratches on you. Yeah, even. there is. Look. Hold okay, hold on a minute. Right yep, there. right there. I knew it. Oh my gosh, Bobby. Oh, I don't like this no more. It's okay. It's okay. Just calm down. Calm down. Take a deep breath. Calm down. I'm not afraid of the dark, but I'm afraid with this thing in the dark. He's He like sees it. Mm -hmm. Like the demon. That's what are you feeling while you're in here. Just scared. I and... am really... I have chills right now just sitting here. Could you tell what chair it moved or... This one right here. This one. That one. Are you finally here? The chair, I, I just seen I just that. Seen I, it, seen it. I seen it too. That bag? I no, know, it was like, the chair moved, the chair moved, moved very, very slightly. slightly. Well, I got a camera right on the corner of it. Oh, so good, good, okay. If that bag or that okay. moved at all, that chair. You gotta move it hard. Oh, it moved it. I don't like this. It's okay, it's okay. I'm gonna freak out. Ethan, okay. calm down. Let's try something. They fall over sometimes, too, just to let you know. If you're in here, you need to do something. Tell me what your name is. I know. Oh. No thanks. No thanks. Oh, stop. Okay, it's okay, buddy. What the f***? Why'd they do that? There ain't nothing gonna hurt you, okay? Are you sure? Yeah. Move, this, move one of these chairs here beside me. Let me know that you're here. Dangerous. Oh, stop. Who's dangerous? You? It's okay. We just gotta get the answers, okay? We, we gotta find this out, Bobby. We gotta find out what is going on here. Okay. Oh, oh, oh no. Uh-uh. Are mm -hmm. you here? Stop it. Oh, no, no, no. Are you in front of me? <laughs> Can you walk away from my alarm? Now. This chair right here beside me, move it. Be careful. Oh, quit. Mom, can you get out now? I don't no, like this. Stop. You're okay. It's calm down, okay? Calm down. Why do we need to be careful? I'm shivering. I'm scared. Okay. I'll, uh, you, will you feel better if Josh comes in? Yeah. Okay, I'll have him come in and sit with us, okay? okay. Turn the lights on. No, you can't turn the lights on because we're trying to get this to we're trying to get this to talk to us, Ethan. Look. But I need to know what your name is. I need you to tell me right now. Come on, if you can move stuff. Move something for me. Dislike. Dislike who, me? Why are you here? What do you want from me and Ethan? Oh no. Oh, I just got the chills really bad. It's okay. Really bad. Are you back? 
Okay. Move something for me. Turn on the microphonic shop. See if we can get a name or whatever. Oh. That's me. Oh. Is that what it sounds like? <laughs> my like, my arm rubbed it. Like my hairs on my arm under here. Did you just touch Rocky? Who touched me? What the fuck? Yes. What's your name? What do you want with this family? What are you saying to us? Does sin? Give me the first name. Who's in here with us right now? Faucet on the set. Where we bless you and bless the house and bless your mom and I just wanted to leave. Can you leave us alone? Something just like scratched me. Something scratched you? I felt something like burning on my leg. On your leg? Yeah. Which one? My left one. Let me see. Ow, 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 ow. Was Scratch that you that did that? You did a good shot of the scratch. Where's the scratch out of you, Tim? It's on my it's on left leg. Yeah. Do you want me to There you go. You got it, huh? Oh, I don't think it did, because the table just moved. Yeah. yeah, that's not... That's... Something just fell off. What are you trying to get? Oh, no. It's okay. It's okay. <sighs> Scare me. Oh, I cannot believe this. Go away. We believe in Jesus, not you. What do you want from us? Are you here with us? Why are you here? What do you want from us? Can you give us a sign that you're still here with us? Even a little thunk or something falling. Are you here with us? Move the chair. Move the chair if you're here with us. Can you move the chair for us? We need to know what you want from us. Can you move the table again? Let us know you're here. I think it's gone. I think it is too now. Mom. Oh, baby. Table moved. Table moved? Yeah. It, it like picked it up or something. Did it? Yeah, I, I swear. I believe you. It like it slightly picked it up then it dropped it. I believe it. Okay, so we got Ethan and Megan back in the house. We're gonna ready to start the cleansing. We just wrapped up the investigation. This is gonna be a new beginning for you guys. Yes it is. Ethan's going to be strong. I'm going to put a little bit of holy water in you, okay? Okay. We come in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that you watch over Ethan and his mother and this family and that you keep them safe in your name. We push out all the evil and negative energy that is in this house or that may be attached to Ethan. It is Jesus Christ who has authority over Ethan now any dark, evil, or wicked spirits inside this house. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we command that you leave. You are no longer welcome here. We cleanse this house. We seal this house. The sign of the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ. Any spirits, good and evil, inside this house, 
We command you leave in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We seal this room, the holy water, symbolizing the blood of Jesus Christ. It is Jesus who has authority over this house now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We are covering this house, the holy water. Leave us, your assignment's been canceled here. You must leave. We seal this room, the blood of Jesus Christ. We command you to leave. It is Jesus who has authority over this house now. Get out. Leave and get out. We don't want you here no more. Your assignment's been canceled here. We seal this bed. The blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, leave this house. Lord, we seal this entryway in your name. This entryway is forever sealed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that you watch over Ethan and Megan and this entire family and you just keep them safe. Anything that was attached to Ethan has been removed in your name and we'll continue to pray for you and your family, okay? Okay. Okay, thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you. You're we appreciate welcome. you guys coming. We really do. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. It was great meeting you. Was Get nice a hug. Meeting you guys. Yeah. Good meeting you, okay? Good meeting you. We'll keep you in our prayers. And we'll get back in touch with you guys in a few days just to kind of see how things are going. And okay. Not good. It's been bad. My son is possessed. My son's crawling around like a demon. I put him in the hospital to keep him, try to keep him safe, and that didn't even help. He's been possessed by the demon and is trying to take possession. Tries to bite him. It marks pentagrams on him still. When it gets upset, you know, he talks about a wheelchair with a woman in it. I don't know what that means or anything, but he's having these dreams. They're like vivid dreams, like night terrors. It's all with the demon is giving him night terrors and stuff, you know? It comes out and it acts like a demon. I have video, I have footage. We can't keep going through this because I mean, he's breaking everything and I can't get a priest to do an exorcism on him. He got off the bus on Friday and his face was fully scratched up from this thing. When we first came out there, I think the objective was one, we believe that that building was haunted and two, what is going on with Ethan? With the investigation, I can say that, you know, we documented enough activity to say that there is something definitely in the building. And I don't know if that's having the effect on Ethan. This thing tells him to do things. It's like a deep sleep and you can't wake him up. You have to tap on his face to try to wake him up. Like he's in a deep trance. Eyes are glassy, they roll in the back of his head sometimes. A few days after we investigated your place, I was running like 103.4 temperature and just got crazy sick and then I kept like passing out. We always look for signs when we do investigations, especially with people claiming to be possessed. How do prayers affect them? How does the holy water affect them? How do they handle the cleansing process? He didn't seem to be affected when I touched him with the holy water. And we did have multiple video cameras running on that. And there were a few times where you could see Ethan's leg kicking the chair. But I think we definitely, before things get too bad, get him into counseling, somebody that he trusts and somebody that he can talk to. I'm sending you a video right now. You guys can send me the videos, but what I'm trying to get at is, you know, we were there to film the stuff and what we've got. I mean, we've been doing this for 17 years and I don't want to, you know, discount what you guys are experiencing and what Ethan's going through. And I don't want to diagnose Ethan. I'll leave that up to the professionals. So I definitely believe there's something inside that house. I don't know how that's affecting Ethan. With the stuff that Ethan is doing, why is he doing that? 
And I don't want us to jump directly to demonic possession because we've worked demonic possession cases before. And I'll tell you, that's not something that anybody wants to mess with. It's not something you want to go through. You don't know what I've been through living with this thing day by day. I can't even, I can't, I don't even have a life. That happens, you know? Yeah. When we acknowledge it as, you know, he could be possibly possessed or he is possessed, I think that helps feed into what he's doing. But is it possible? As the adults, we have to find a way to help Ethan cope with this. Yeah. And be open-minded that it could be something else that's not demonic possession. When you guys acknowledge that, as it being that, that maybe feeds into him acting out. It ain't him acting out, it's not Ethan. It's the demon in him. And I keep telling it that I have authority over it and it don't help at all. Clearly he's he's causing some of it to happen. And you guys have right. you guys have acknowledged that. So why is he doing that? That's the question. Is he putting the marks on himself? Is what I'm asking. No, absolutely not. Right. I'm sending you a video right now. Okay. We got to talk to Ethan and meet Ethan. He seems like a super smart, great kid. He is a good kid. So we just have to figure out what's going on. And I can't say 100% sure that he's not causing the marks. And I don't think no, he's, he's I don't... not. He's not to trust me. He can't draw on his back. I mean, they appear as his pentagrams. They're all pentagrams on them. It lives with us. It hears everything. Definitely not mental illness. It's paranormal. Watch the video that I sent you. Listen to it very closely because he's talking in demon language too. He talks some kind of language. It's not English, so. I'm willing to come back up there and do what we can do to help you guys. In the meantime, I want you guys to definitely pursue the counseling. Yeah. And talk with your doctor. I wish we didn't have to acknowledge it. I wish we didn't have to live with it. It's awful. Yeah. Every day, day in and day out. Well, I would just be careful doing anything too crazy. Yeah. Because you could really put Ethan in a lot of danger. You know, we've seen the dark side of the paranormal and what it can do to people and how it affects people. The main focus has to be protecting Ethan. Yeah. That is the main focus right now. Yeah, I keep getting a run around, you know? That's what I keep getting, and I'm tired of it. This child needs help, and no one's helping him because they don't know the other side of Ethan. And I just don't know what to do anymore. Sometimes I feel really hopeless with Helpless, you know? And then we'll get something set up and get back up there and see what we can do. And we've got resources on our side too we can contact. You know, everybody's gonna want rock solid proof before they do anything. Yeah. All right, we're gonna continue to pray for you guys and pray thank for you. Ethan and, you know, we want the best for you guys always. Okay. All right, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you, have a good one. You too, bye. Bye-bye. Hell, go away, go back to hell. Hell. Ethan, come back, fight it, Ethan, fight this thing. Ethan, fight this thing. Touch me. Hey, hey. Fight this thing, Ethan. Ethan, fight this. Ethan, get the demon. Tell the demon to go away, Ethan. Go away, go back to hell. Ethan, fight this. Ethan, get the demon. Tell the demon to go away, Ethan. Fight this, Ethan. No. Ethan, fight it. Ethan, you gotta fight it. No, Ethan, no. Come on, come on. Ethan. Come on. Come on, Ethan. Come on. Come on, Ethan. Come out of this. Come on, Ethan. Ethan. Come on, Ethan. Leave Ethan alone. Get away from him. Get out of him. Pizza, we need you. Come on. Come on, Ethan. Put the camera. Come on. Come on.
attachments can occur immediately. That's usually how you tell the difference between an attachment and a possession. One of the things that really struck me about it is, of course, it seems like Ethan's an only child. And um, and people had this misconception that uh, demons, that they're there to cause suffering, and they do, but, but really what they do is consume it. So when there's already all that tension in the home, it's like having a giant bug light. I can tell what he and the family get out of this situation. It's not just about, you know, negative attention. Uh, The entire family is able to focus away from their other day-to-day problems and focus on this. It's almost like um, the second child in an alcoholic family is typically the acting out child and their job is to draw attention away from the addict and i'm first born from an alcoholic family so you know i I know that clearly and i saw him move the chair and the table with his legs but i don't get the sense that that that's it it's not an either or situation with attachments or with demons it's not a they're faking and uh, or they're not, or there's mental illness or a possession. Oftentimes, like all of life, it's both and. There's just this big hairball of um, complexity in the situation. Um, And I can tell you while I was watching the video, when you were alone in the hallway and at the table, I had trouble breathing. I mean, I actually felt like something was sitting on my chest. Um, And then at the end of the video, when he's standing on his head, really sounded like there was a second voice that came through. And what can happen in these situations, C.S. Lewis said the the greatest trick the devil ever played in the 20th century was convincing everybody he didn't exist. And so to deflect suspicion, to prevent any real um, interfering measures by the church, by an investigator, um, oftentimes, it won't just disappear, it'll play kind of a, a sleight of hand. If it's telling Ethan things, it may be a situation where he feels like he has to fake in order to get the help. Um, and the family seemed very credulous of everything he was doing. Something is definitely going on with him. And then what happened to you afterwards is is always indicative to me that something's real because uh, we had a fire from a, a electrical cord that wasn't plugged in after I got a consultation. We had our, our second story screens ripped open like claws had done them after I got called in on a consultation. So that's always a signal to me that something's going on. It's just far more complex. And if Ethan and the family are getting something out of it, they're going to keep inviting it back. I I thought your suggestion for for therapy is really important. Um, They've done some medical intervention and tests, and it wants to be there. If, in fact, something's actually there, just watching the video, you know, I, I, I couldn't say for certain. And I don't know if anybody checked his fingernails or his pockets for something to scratch himself with. I watched the video, I scratched myself as hard as I can with my thumbnail, and I didn't get the effect that it appears he got. To get him out of the house and away from his family and get him some social connections. It's not about him expelling it himself, it's about him not needing it, the family not needing it. Therapy, I require all my clergy to get six months of therapy before they're even ordained because it's very important to be able to talk that through. Where does Ethan's need end and this other thing's need disappear? One of the things I mentioned to you um, was a deacon demon. Um, this was theorized way back in Egyptian times and these are, these are minor entities that grow off of someone. And it's almost um, this mad mark of uh, uh, status to have a child or or to grow off of something. And they're almost like barnacles. Um, They're not major. 
um, they may not even require an exorcism to get rid of. And, and throughout the history of the occult, going through the Middle Ages and Islamic demonology, um, they're more like a divic, which is an attachment that can be gotten rid of. The biggest thing for me is the, is the counseling and getting him some kind of larger social circle, the kind of grief that must have occurred with dad's death. It's just a maelstrom, a bug light, that'll pull anything it can in. Um, I'd also be interested in finding out if any of the other people with him trick-or-treating saw anything occur. With him not reacting to like the holy water, the prayer and stuff like that, does that give you any information? No, because there are transient attachments, uh, transient possessions. It's, it's like a, a mental illness. Uh, there are times when someone can be perfectly lucid and free. Only if the uh, attachment or the possession has reached a certain level is that sort of thing going to drive you crazy. Ethan clearly didn't watch enough TV and, and he didn't go crazy when that occurred was that you became like a father figure. And I think some of the faking was to get you guys to offer more help. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle became so desperate because his son died in the spiritualist movement that he started engaging in a certain amount of fakery to get everybody else to believe him because he was so desperate for that. I hate to say this, and, and I certainly don't want them to feel attacked, but mom and grandma are kind of feeding into this, especially mom, uh, big time. The blessed metals, holy water, I mean, it doesn't necessarily do anything. People go to mass possessed. They take the Eucharist possessed. Nothing affects them at that point, especially something as minor as uh, uh, in the hierarchy as hell something very minor wouldn't react like that but the fact that he didn't react at all didn't surprise me it really told me that um he he needs someone else in his life um, that attachment towards you and your brothers was uh, really evident even on camera but the embellishment that he gave you guys um i think was more believe me you weren't there. He didn't appear to even see that mom was videotaping because grandma was saying they're calling out to him. Like, I had my ear pressed up against the audio speaker because I heard two voices. The TV's going, grandma's yelling, Ethan's growling. He says something and I could not make out what it was because I, I mean, I know some Akkadian and Babylonian and, and Latin and stuff or Greek, I couldn't make it out. But there were two voices. One was speaking forward and one was speaking backward. And that's when I went, oh, God. You know, because up to that point, I wasn't sure. Also, they're scratching again. Your fingernail can't do that. But it looked like a burn to me. He felt safe with you. Maybe he was able to push it away. And he was trying to make sure that you knew something was there. Watching the video. I, I start everything and I deliberately make myself irritated. This is fake. It's all fake. And I do that on purpose. I sit there with convince me. And like I said, I couldn't breathe at one point. And then at another point, I got really angry. And that's usually a reaction to something, you know, bothering this kid. I, I was mad. And so, again, something's there. I don't know if he can push it away himself. The best steps he can take at this point are to get the counseling and to establish a relationship with some kind of male authority figure so that he can start to heal from the grief that he's been through. And I, I never want to do anything to make the situation worse or put Ethan's life right. in danger. Right. I don't think you did at all. I, as far as I'm concerned, you did everything right. I known you guys for quite a while and had a lot of respect for you so that's why when you called I'm like yeah absolutely uh, what can I do because you don't bait and you don't you know do anything to put them into any kind of danger he needs to have these outside relationships and he needs to have the counseling 
because he, he needs to know how to recognize the difference between the demon's voice and, and maybe his own grief. Uh, and yeah, he's got some empathic gifts himself. So if he can learn how to recognize uh, the difference between if he senses, I feel like my dad's here. And you know, the demon always comes as everything you've always wanted. He just seems like such a, a sensitive, uh, smart kid. Um, I, I, I didn't get some kind of wild attention getting feeling off of him. Just the, please believe me because I want help. I think you should be there if I do talk to him because he trusts you. But it would be important for Ethan to feel like he could say absolutely anything at all. Mm -hmm. that it you know wouldn't go in the episode or anything this is just to help him out the more confidence he gets that he is in control of his own life um the better off he'll be it will help him feel more in control and that'll make a huge difference in ending that invitation thanks so much you have a great day you too thank you thank you bye-bye